Okay. So today's topic is actually small, but then it's actually the second most cause, common cause of anemia in a person. So let's take a look at that. The topic is anemia of chronic disease. Now, this is a very interesting topic. So write this down. Uh, guys, uh, turn on your cameras because I have no idea if you're writing or what's happening. Anemia, we know what it is. Anemia means there's not enough red blood cells and hemoglobin. Okay, so if you do a blood test, you see that the hemoglobin levels will be lower than the normal levels. This is what you call anemia. The word chronic means these are diseases of long term. The, this is not the exact definition, but basically any disease that is going to last you maybe a lifetime or a long time, maybe a few months, you call this chronic diseases. So I have a question is, O obesity or chronic disease? Can someone answer? Is obesity considered a chronic disease? Yes or no? Guys? Okay, I'm gonna answer this one. Obesity is considered a chronic disease, okay? So diseases of long-term. Now let's begin the lecture. This is the second most common cause of anemia worldwide. So let's take a look at what happens here. Now, what happens is, if there is any inflammatory state, or in other words, if your body is fighting anything, literally anything, let's take chronic infections. Uh, can someone give me an example for a chronic infection? At least type it in the chat. I'll just say it. What is the most Typical chronic infection, TB, exactly. Shashank, you are correct. TB is a chronic infection, okay? Then autoimmune diseases. Where the body attacks itself. Autoimmune diseases are diseases where the body attacks itself and literally almost all autoimmune diseases can cause this but the most commonly associated one is rheumatoid arthritis. This was done in the previous module. Rheumatoid arthritis is associated with um, anemia of chronic disease. Bas uh, I need you to understand literally any autoimmune can disease can cause this, but most commonly it is seen with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Then chronic kidney disease. Then neoplastic conditions. Neoplastic means any cancers, okay? And any pro-inflammatory states. Such as diabetes mellitus, obesity, etc. Basically anything that is inflammatory can lead to yeah. Sorry. So basically any disease which causes inflammation can lead to anemia of chronic disease. This is due to the release of something called interleukin 6. 
So there's a lot of cytokines released, and one of them is interleukin-6. Does anyone know what interleukin-6 does is? Uh, what its action mechanism or what it does? It acts on the liver. And what does it do in the liver? So what it does is it causes the release of acute phase reactants. Acute phase reactants. Such as CRP, ferritin. So what is ferritin? Can someone tell me what ferritin is? Guys, uh, this was done in a previous lecture. If you're not, if you don't want to speak it out, just type it. Okay. This is the storage form of iron inside cells. And the main one that is involved in anemia of chronic disease, something called hepcidin. Hepcidin, hepcidin, whatever you want to call it. What this does is it acts on two main locations. One in the macrophages. It acts on the macrophages. And in Prashant's lecture on um, iron deficiency anemia, he talked about macrophages and everything. So basically, macrophages store iron and release it to the bone marrow. Macrophages, it stores iron and gives it to the red blood cells, the maturing red blood cells. The next location this axon is, okay, I'm gonna draw it this way, the GI epithelium. So there's a lot of, this is where you get iron. If you take iron supplements, if you take food, all the iron enters into the GI epithelium and then is transported into blood. Developing erythrocytes. And this to blood. So what happens is hepcidin inhibits this transport, it stops iron leaving cells. Okay, uh, we will write that. Just for now, uh, draw this. What hepcidin does is it inhibits iron from leaving cells. Okay, so can someone tell me what is going to happen to the level of iron in blood? Low, okay. Yeah. Iron in blood will be low. Give a second. Now, the other cytokines. Reduce the lifespan of red blood cells and release of EPO. Just write this. I will explain. Guys, I need you to understand rheumatoid arthritis is not the only example, okay? It could be literally any autoimmune disease. You don't need to memorize any of these uh, conditions. You just need to know if there's an inflammatory state, you can get anemia of chronic disease. What you need to know is this molecule.
Okay, let's move on. Um, is it clear till now? If not, please ask me, okay? So the next thing is, hepcidin is released from liver to trap iron inside cells, reducing its availability from invading organisms. Okay. So I hope this is clear. Next, let's go on, okay? So what happens is, hepcidin is supposed to stop the invading organisms from getting any iron, invading organisms or neoplastic cells or whatever from getting iron. But what happens is, red blood cells don't get the iron. The precursors of red blood cells don't get iron, okay? However, Red blood cell, progenitor cells, do not receive iron. Leading to a, what type of anemia? Normocytic, ma macrocytic or microcytic? Just guess. Is microcytic. Yes, microcytic is one, and the other one is normocytic. It's similar to how iron deficiency anemia is, okay? Microcytic or normocytic anemia. So, in iron deficiency, in the beginning, it is a normocytic anemia, but later on, it becomes a microcytic anemia. Same concept here. Okay. Now, next, let's talk about, uh, this is the whole pathogenesis. There's nothing else. If there's any inflammatory state, acute phase reactants are released. One of them is hepcidin, which inhibits iron release from cells. Okay. Next, let's talk about the diagnosis. What about the serum iron? Serum iron, will it be high or low? Low. Low, it will be low. Serum means blood, okay? When you take a blood sample and test it, it will be low. The second one, TIBC, total iron binding concentration, this will be low because iron is trapped in its storage form. Okay. The next one is ferritin. 
it will be increased because it is an acute phase reactant. Okay. Next, something called soluble transferrin receptor. Uh, look at how I write this. Simple S, T, simple F, R. Okay. This is normal. Let me explain this. I have a doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. When uh, iron is low, when the transfer yeah. the amount of transfer in produced is high, so the total ion binding capacity tends to increase. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let uh, I will explain this. Okay. Uh, that's actually a good question. Let me explain. Where do you find transparent? Can someone tell me where is transparent? Is it in blood or? Liver. Sorry? From the liver. Okay, uh, no. Uh, where do you find the transparent molecules? Is it traveling in blood or is it inside the bone marrow? Um, in the blood. In the blood, okay. So what happens is anemia of chronic disease, right? Here's the iron which comes into the gut. And you have the transferrin molecules. The iron cannot go out, correct? Yeah. What happens is, since this is a long-term process, this is a chronic disease, over time, transferrin will reduce, okay? What happens is the liver, this is not an acute phase reactant. It is not going to be stimulated by this. So the liver will stop producing this, because it is no longer necessary, that causes the total ion binding capacity to go down. Is that clear? If not, please ask. Okay. Let me repeat. This is no longer happening. Iron is not coming into the blood. That causes over time, the amount of transferrin produced to go down. Okay, so there's no there's no transferrin to any to take up the total ion binding capacity the ion so that causes the TIBC to go down because you don't have this. I'm assuming uh, it's okay. If I if not. I will move on. Uh, you can ask me. Now let's differentiate ion deficiency anemia. This is what they love to ask versus anemia of chronic disease. Fe, ferritin, T, I, B, C. Uh, oh yeah, this soluble transferrin receptor, it's found in the bone marrow, which is waiting for the transferrin to come and bind. It is usually normal or it can be increased. I didn't want to put the word increased because it's usually considered normal. Like for exam purposes, it goes as normal. Okay. This is S, S T F R. 
Can someone tell me in iron deficiency anemia, is the iron low or high? Guys? Yeah. Is it's low, right? Iron deficiency anemia. What about the serum iron in anemia of chronic disease? Is it low or high? Low. Low. Okay. What about the ferritin levels in iron deficiency anemia? It will be low in anemia of chronic disease. Is it low or high? Okay, I have mentioned it right here. It's an acute phase reactant. It is going to be released by the liver, so it will be high. Okay. And finally, the TIBC in iron deficiency anemia will be high. Anemia of chronic disease, it will be low. Okay. Next. Let's talk about the treatment. If you have any questions, please ask. The number one treatment, the only effective treatment, which will guarantee that the anemia goes away is to treat the underlying condition. And this is the main thing you need to do. Can someone tell me, is iron therapy effective or not? Don't write it, okay? No. Iron therapy, you, you know the oral iron supplements? Is it low or is it effective or not? Not effective. Exactly. Vilchani, correct? It's not effective. Okay? Because iron won't be released into circulation. Into circulation by hepcidin. Okay? Next is in severe conditions, you can go for blood transfusion. And finally, you can go for EPO. I will, uh, next topic I will talk about what EPO is and what to look out for. But EPO injections can be given. So Sasanga talked about the kidney, uh, about EPO in chronic kidney disease. He discussed uh, the way you give it and everything. Right now, I'm gonna talk about something um, related to EPO, okay? Right after this, I will put the topic and discuss that. Chronic, I'll just write this, kidney disease. Used commonly in chronic kidney disease, okay? And use is limited due to increased mortality. Okay, let's uh, go into erythropoiesis stimulating agents. The examples are erythropoietin 
and dot uh, just uh, pronounce it your way. So dab for it in. Uh, these are the commonly used ones. You can't see the full screen. Uh, which part? So I can't see the full screen. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, let's go on. So uh, erythropoietin is produced in the kidney. And it stimulates bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Okay. That's the first point. The next one is erythropoietin is elevated in polycythemia. This is a condition we didn't discuss yet and reduced in chronic kidney disease, CKD. If you have chronic kidney disease, erythropoietin levels are low. If you have erythro, uh, high erythropoietin levels, it could be because you have polycythemia. The next one is, if a patient has, this is usually the indication, renal failure, Thus, hemoglobin less than 10 grams per deciliter, uh, you give EPO injections yeah, weekly. Actually, cut the word weekly. Um, I'm not going to discuss the exact time period, this was done by Sasanga. The point I need you to understand about this is one third of patients develop new or worsening hypertension. Two to eight weeks, after starting treatment.
This is the most important point I need you to uh, understand about this. Okay, I'm going to explain this now. Erythropoietin is usually given to patients who have chronic kidney disease. Okay. Okay. Because the kidney is supposed to be producing the erythropoietin, but uh, due to the kidney disease, it is no longer producing. Okay. And the indication is as follows. Some patients, one in three patients, will develop new or worsening hypertension two to weeks after starting therapy. That is because suddenly the body has started to produce red blood cells. The blood volume has increased. That leads to hypertension. And also keep in mind, erythropoietin use is limited because it increases mortality. So the on, usually the only place we always give, when I say always, we always consider giving uh, erythropoietin is in chronic kidney disease. Otherwise, it is usually discussed before giving, okay? Uh, that point, I need you to understand, this point is very important. This is especially important for surgical topics. Next, let's talk about the next topic, aplastic anemia. So after today's lecture, uh, we are done with uh, all the anemias, the red blood cell disorders. We'll be starting platelets soon, okay? Can someone break down this word for me, aplastic? Guys, can someone tell me what does aplastic mean? Aplasia. Aplasia. So guys, tell me what is aplasia and what is, yeah. What is hyperplasia, someone? Increased production. Yeah, increased cell production. Then what is aplasia? Um, no cell there. production. Exactly. Absent, absence of cell division, basically. Okay, hypertrophy is increased growth. Trophy, the word trophy means growth. Okay. Absence of cell division. Now, the problem here is the name is aplastic anemia, but this is actually a pancytopenia. Okay. This is actually a pancytopenia rather than just an anemia, okay? So just write this, should rather be called aplastic pancytopenia. I will explain why I said this. So long ago, it was easier to figure out that the patient is anemic. Like you can look at the mucosal palate and tell, okay, this patient is anemic. And they started categorizing the diseases as anemia. 
okay, citroblastic anemia, uh, iron deficiency anemia, all of those. And this aplastic anemia was also put there. Okay. But then uh, the reality is this is actually a pancytopenia. Let's write. The reason is this is due to a failure or destruction of hematopoietic stem cells. So let's discuss this. I would recommend you keep some space to write maybe around three words, hypocellular. Uh, don't write this. Dry bone marrow. Something like this. Uh, keep some space there to write. And after that, just draw a bone marrow. The diaphysis or whatever, the bone marrow. Now, this is the bone marrow. And down here also, maybe around three lines below, we're gonna draw and show the transition. Draw this. So on the top part, just make sure you draw, you use a red color pen if you have, and draw it in red. This is the normal bone marrow. This is the bone marrow. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens. This circle can be bigger. We are not gonna write anything here. Okay. Let's take a look at this bone marrow. Draw several large cells, uh, at least three cells. Okay. Large nucleus. And then you can draw, draw an arrow and write what it forms. It forms red blood cells. It forms platelets. And it forms white blood cells. These are the stem cells. I think uh, you guys know why I asked you to draw it large, but if you don't, it is because these large cells, this large, oh. Give me a second, good. So what happens is these large cells, these large stem cells, they divide, they keep dividing, becoming smaller, becoming more mature until it forms the final product, okay? That's why you have these large cells in the beginning.
in what happens in aplastic anemia is you lose these stem cells okay loss of stem cells this leads to pancytopenia what is the condition when uh, the red blood cells are low what do you call it when red blood cells are low i mean we uh, we talk about anemia. This. anemia okay it causes anemia it will be low so anemia what happens when this a reduction in platelets thrombocytopenia yeah thrombocytopenia it leads to increased bleeding which manifests as petechia then uh, purpura then mucosal bleeding etc okay and what happens if the white blood cell levels are low leukopenia leukopenia and it predisposes the person to infections uh, yeah let's write those words leukopenia uh, this one is thrombocytopenia uh, increase infections uh this with this anemia i need you to write reticular side count goes down so what happens is you get a low reticulocyte count and in response in response the erythropoietin levels will increase the body starts producing erythropoietin from the kidney okay let's discuss what happens here so due to some cause we didn't talk about the causes yet due to some causes the normal bone marrow is destroyed and it becomes hypocellular dry becomes a hypocellular and dry bone marrow. okay so the normal bone marrow due to some causes we will talk about that next it becomes hypocellular and dry and it will be replaced by fat okay becomes fat filled so this is it for the patho genesis let's talk about the causes next
um, patient presence with pancytopenia. That's the first point. Yeah, the patient presents with pancytopenia. Okay, I have a question. In sickle cell anemia, we talked about a virus which causes a condition uh, that causes increased, that causes red blood cells to stop producing. Can someone tell me what the virus is? It starts with a P. Adenovirus. Uh, it's power virus, power virus, B19. What does it cause? Okay, I'm gonna tell the answer. It causes aplastic crisis. It causes not aplastic anemia, causes aplastic crisis in a hyperactivated bone marrow where only RBCs are not synthesized. The next point is myelofibrosis and aplastic anemia must be differentiated. This is, I would say, the most important point in aplastic anemia, because they usually give the question asking these two together. So let's draw this, uh, something like this. Draw something like a tunnel, okay? So we do two tunnels. One is for myelofibrosis, so don't write it just below that. Uh, the first one is for myelofibrosis. The other one is for a plastic anemia. Now, 
in aplastic anemia uh, think of this as the bone marrow tunnel in which the red blood cell comes out okay the final red blood cell comes out of this tunnel in aplastic anemia what is going to be present in the bone marrow uh, what is going to be the replacement fatty fatty tissue okay so basically these red blood cells are uh, coming through a cushion okay let me repeat the red blood cells that come out from an aplastic bone marrow is similar to coming out through cushions okay so red blood cells have normal morphology they love to ask this i have checked several exam papers including our own university exam papers they have asked this question in myelofibrosis what do you think the red blood cells come out from what is going to be the surface it has to go against fibrosis exactly fibrosis okay so you get a very rough surface of fibrosis and the red blood cell it literally sheds a tear when coming out okay you call this a tear drop cell this is called a tear drop cell uh open the skeletal node that i sent guys i don't have access to it but go to aplastic anemia and you can see the first image which is a bo normal bone marrow bone marrow and you can see the aplastic bone marrow okay uh, go to the skeletal note and check forget the acute leukemia go and check the normal bone marrow and check the aplastic bone marrow you can see it's filled with fat okay that's the first thing to check and down the last image you can see a tear drop cell okay that's what you call a tear drop cell Uh, check the skeletal node. Okay, let me share it with this. Mm. You guys can see, right? Uh, check the normal bone marrow. and check the aplastic bone marrow you can see all these white fat globules okay uh, we are not going to talk about the leukemia cells but uh, it's going to be we are going to do it later on and here you can see the tear drop cells which you find in myelofibrosis okay let's write the causes that's the same causes you find in the uh, skeletal note let's just write those uh you need to know these causes these are well defined um known causes number 1 oh causes the first one is radiation the 
The second one is viral infections. Epstein Barr virus, Parvo virus, B19, uh, just put a star above this, HIV, and in red, in underline or whatever, all hepatitis viruses. Hepatitis A through E, all of them. I will explain. The next one, okay, uh, let me explain this. I think you know that radiation therapy targets rapidly dividing uh, cells. Okay, when you go for cancer treatment, radiation is going to destroy all rapidly dividing cells. Okay, so all these rapidly dividing cells will be destroyed. That's the radiation therapy uh, explanation. Viruses, Epstein-Barr virus can cause this, HIV can cause this, all hepatitis viruses can cause this, okay? And usually hepatitis, it affects young males, uh, not the disease, the aplastic crisis from it, it usually affects young males. And power virus B19 is here because it causes Literally, it causes aplastic anemia. I explained that here, okay? It causes aplastic anemia, okay? Like, uh, not pancytopenia, it causes aplastic anemia. That's why I wanted to put that. It's not a, you don't need to know that as a cause, but you need to know this point, okay? Only anemia and about this myelofibrosis. The next cause is something called Fanconi anemia. This is an autosomal recessive bone marrow failure. Okay, autosomal recessive bone marrow failure. Uh, draw a short, a short child. Just draw a short child. Short stature. And the fingers, the Except the thumb, the other fingers are normal. One, two, three, four. But the thumb, it's as if it was attached later on. Okay, the thumb, it was as if uh, you can see the skeletal node, you'll see malformed thumb. Uh, write this in red. Malformed thumb. The reason I tell you to write this in red is because this is the only uh, disease where you get this. Okay. And then you can have uh, these brown spots around the skin. It's called cafe aule spots. And 
aplastic anemia. Just draw this. I will send a, what do you call it, a flashcard for this later. The next one, okay. So I'll give you some time. Okay, let's move on. Where was I? The next cause. It's mainly idiopathic. Okay, we don't know what causes it. We are basically idiots who still don't know what causes it. Uh, but we assume it's because of T cell mediated destruction. Destruction. So there's a reason for this assumption. When we talk about treatment, we will talk about anti T cell treatment, okay, which are effective. Next one is drugs. The number one cause is, uh, I'm gonna use red, it's not as important, but it's good to know this benzene. Okay, in rubber industry, you use benzene, you can inhale it, which can cause aplastic anemia. So the next drug, can someone tell me what is this drug? What is the drug class? Chlorum pinnacle. Yeah. Anyone? This is a cheap antibiotic. Okay. Used in our countries. Uh, it is not used in the, okay, not our countries. I would say poorer countries. Uh, the Western countries don't use this drug. But in poorer countries, we sometimes use this and uh, it has a risk of aplastic anemia. Alkylating agents. I talked about one, carmastine. I uh, don't write this. Uh, NMU people, don't forget this drug. Okay, then cyclosporine, all of those. Those are alkylating agents and antimetabolites. These are the drugs. No, oh, sorry, these are the causes. Next, let's talk about the treatment. The final part of this uh, topic, the treatment. First, 
you need to withdraw offending agent whatever is causing it you try to stop that okay then immunosuppressive regimen such as antithymocyte globulin or cyclosporin oh sorry The next one is you can do a bone marrow transplant, okay? Bone marrow transplant. And finally, Okay, not finally, red blood cell, platelet transfusions. And finally, bone marrow stimulation with drugs such as GM CSF. Okay. You can try to stimulate the bone marrow to produce that uh, cells. I will explain all of these now. So, first of all, you try to get rid of the cause. Okay, any cause. You try to get it up, but then uh, uh, because most of these patients are on chemotherapy, usually these are cancer patients. Okay, these are cancer patients who are on chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So that means uh, until you treat the cancer, it is hard to treat the pancytopenia. Okay. The role of these chemotherapy, radiotherapy is to destroy rapidly dividing cells. Uh, if you don't know this, you can write. If not, just listen. So what chemotherapy and radiotherapy does is it destroys rapidly dividing cells. Okay, And a type of rapidly dividing cells is... Yeah, especially with chemotherapy. Another type is red blood cells. So that's why you get uh, hair fall and then uh, anemia. Okay. That's for that. Then you can, uh, if there is an uh, unknown cause, such as if it is idiopathic or if it is due to after a viral infection, you can go for these immunosuppressive regimens. They have been found to work. Okay. Next, you can remove the bone marrow and put a new one in. And uh, if uh, you needed, you can go for transfusions. If the anemia or thrombocytopenia is too much, you can go for those. And you can go for these bone marrow stimulating agents. If, even if there's one cell, you can try to stimulate this. Okay, to divide. So those are the treatments. Now, let's talk about the blood groups. We are done with uh, all the major topics. 
we are going to go into one topic which is obvious for everyone but we should do it for the sake of completion and the other topic we are going to discuss next is blood transfusion reactions this comes under surgery but we will discuss it here in brief okay uh, don't write this topic right now so what are the two classifications that you know for blood groups abo and rx exactly abo classification and the rhesus classification okay so let's take a look at each blood group b a b o uh this topic i need you guys to answer because these are stuff you learn in high school on a red blood cell of a type what is the type of antigen we call it a. yeah okay you have a type antigen so for b you have b type that's where you get the name okay what do you have in ab type a and b a and b okay you have both a and b and uh, finally we have the empty one there's nothing no antigens on a next is the hard question what type of immunoglobulin don't write this is it igm or igg found in the blood of a and b is it igm molecule or igg molecule Uh, this is a answer i guess uh, i don't think anyone would be able to tell for a and b M. sorry igm yes you are correct it's an igm molecule okay let's go to that okay so if you have done immunology how many molecules of antibodies are found in an igm how many molecules of antibodies you find stuck to the ring 5 5 you are correct okay uh what is this antibody against is it against a or is it against b b b okay this is an igm molecule there's nothing uh, big about igm and igg it's just that i uh, you need to know the specific functions but igm is basically five uh antibodies stuck together okay and for this you have the same anti a ig a uh, igm this is also igm molecule okay what is the antibody found in ab none uh, huh? 
no antibody yeah. form. Yeah. No. Okay. You guys can take time to draw. And finally, oh, oh, I'll give time for O, you have both A and B antibodies. Okay. And this is an IgG molecule. Uh, let's talk about the rhesus factor. Or you call it the factor D. If it is rhesus positive, that means there is the rhesus antigen on the red blood cell. If it is rhesus negative, there's nothing. What is the antibody found in rhesus positive blood? The antibody. No antibody against. No antibodies. No antibody. Okay. What is the antibody found in rhesus negative blood? The name. I G. Yeah. It's a Ig G I molecule. G IgG molecule, what is the name of this antibody? Uh, if you have studied gynecology, gynecology and obstetrics, you should know this one. Okay, it's anti D. Uh, I will send what D is uh, to the group chat later. Uh, let's talk about who can give blood to whom. Can, uh, if you don't have space, try to find some space. Can receive blood from, or just write it like this, if you don't have space. Who can A, receive blood from? Yes, A, O. So same for B, B and O. What about A, B? One word answer. Just tell me one word answer. Everyone. Everyone, okay. Everyone, A, B, A, B. O. What about O? O. O.
who can resist positive people get blood count. Both resist positive and negative. Yeah. Rh plus and minus. This is actually not a huge deal. When we talk about transfusion reactions, we'll talk about it. But recess is not a may, it's not a major consideration. Okay. During blood transfusions. The main consideration is the ABO classification. Then you consider the recess factor. And if you don't have any option, you can transfuse. The next one is can give blood to whom can A give blood to? Who can A give blood to? A and a and AB. So this is B and AB. And this, who can they give blood to? AB only. Okay. And O can give to everyone. So rhesus positive people can only give it to rhesus positive people. Rhesus negative can give it to both rhesus positive or negative. Okay. Uh, so once you're done, uh, take a five minute break, sharp at nine in seven minutes. Okay, not five. In seven minutes, we'll start blood transfusions. I need around 30 minutes maximum and we are done for the day. Once you're done, take a six minute break now.